Kia ora tato. It's My name is Ken Moore. I'm the minister here at St Andrew's Church. And it's an absolute delight to welcome you all here to, to this event. I started by using a statement which I learned from the council's Komatua Tane Pokaya, which talks about the fact that different birds sing differently. And I guess that's appropriate today because we're going to hear what different candidates are going to sing to us and we've got to decide who's going to make up the best chorus together. So uh, add my welcome to all the candidates, thank you for being here. We have uh, three apologies now because this afternoon we heard Brad Hills has got the, the flu and won't be able to join us. And, uh, Andrea McLaughlin and Mike West can't be with us either, unfortunately. And today we will hear from uh, those who are standing for the position of Mayor. They will have two minutes each to be able to present the key things which they want you to know about. The East Hamilton uh, Ward, that, sorry, the East Ward candidates will have one minute each to present the key things they want us to hear and then we will enter into a time of questioning. We hope that will be around about four o'clock and after question time about half past four, you're welcome to stay, have a cup of tea, meet informally and continue the conversation. Gorham, would you come forward please? And so by that scientific method, I now call on James Casson to address us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the great turnout. Um, it's always best to be first because then you can listen to everybody else uh, talk after you. But I was first yesterday and I'll be first again today. Look, um, I'm a first term city councillor. Uh, prior to uh, being in the city council, I was a police officer for 28 years, both Australia and New Zealand, doing a lot of different things overseas as well. Um, during my first term of the city council, I've been involved in, well, my passion is community safety projects, and that is roading, footpaths, and everything else, and working closely with the Hamilton Police. Now, we've got a very close relationship now with Hamilton Police, or closer than we've had for a very long time. Um, and uh, I was one of the main drivers, along with um, uh, Councillor Bunting, on the improving our, of the Gordon Road, Thomas Road intersection, which is saving lives at the stage. I stand for... Um, more rate surety for um, back to basics policy. You know, we've, we've done some pretty frivolous spending in this um, council over the last uh, three year term. We have to go back to basics. We've got enough policies or enough, uh, enough things operating at the moment to last us for another three years. So like you, you get a certain amount of money into your house and there's only a certain amount of money you can spend. But it should be the same with council. Now we, um, we have to go back to basics, having uh, well quality water going into your house, your wastewater taken away, your sewage taken away, your rubbish picked up, the streets looked after, your infrastructure looked after, and our stadia and buildings looked after. We have to get back to basics to save money. And that doesn't mean uh, any support for regional fuel tax from me either, but there has to be alternative um, funding that comes into the council because the rate payers like yourselves are maxed out. There are certain people on fixed incomes which are the retired, we can't keep asking you for more money. It's unfair. And we can't keep asking the, uh, the developers for more money as well because they are maxed out on each section they, they build. So it's a back to basics policy that I am advocating for um, and working, continue working closely with the New Zealand Police and with the community to make this a very safe and proud city to live in. Thank you. I'm running for both Mayor and East Ward. Thank you very much. I'm Paula Southgate and I want to work with you as your mayor for Hamilton to create a city in which we all thrive. It's an exciting time for our city and we all know that it's a great place to live and we know that more and more people are choosing to call it their home and arriving from all around the world. And this presents us with some opportunities and some challenges. 
But today I've chosen to reflect on what creates a caring community in Hamilton where everyone can thrive, largely around the topic on the invitation around social justice. Because no matter what we build, people won't prosper unless we are having the right debate. The European Charter for the Safeguarding of Human Rights in Cities talks about cities as a collective space which belongs to all those who live in it, where citizens have the right conditions for political, social and ecological fulfilment, social cohesion and participation. And Hamilton, like all cities, must provide for the physical infrastructural assets for the city to meet the needs of its people drinking water, sewers, roads, pavements, and so on. And community assets such as playgrounds, pools, parks, and more. Everyone agrees that we need the pipes and such and the roads, but the views vary on, on over the other things that add real quality to our life, quality of life in our city. And this is where understanding the drivers of social wellbeing and fairness and equality really kick in. The Needham City Council has done an excellent job of that. It has identified the needs, of, needs as connected, cohesive, safe communities with healthy, affordable homes and a reasonable standard of living. Not for some, but for all. And over the last 18 years, I've represented Hamilton. I've listened to what you want. You want safe, thriving communities with playgrounds, sports facilities, a healthy environment, green spaces, and places you can enjoy together. And that is what I want to want for you too. Together, I believe, as your mayor, we can create a city that is focused firmly on the well-being of the people Thank first. You. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Angela O'Leary and I'm standing for the mayoralty. I think it's time we had a mayor with experience and a mayor you can trust. I've been with council for 12 years representing you and representing our city, a role that I have absolutely loved. In January when I announced my candidacy for the mayoralty, I said my campaign would not just be about me, the candidate, it would be about you. So I've spent that time talking to residents and I've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of you. And I've asked you what matters most to you. And you've told me there are two key things that matter to you the most. The first one is rates and the uncertainty of future rates increases. And the second one is trust. You no longer feel that you can trust all of the decisions being made by the council. If you elect me in October as your mayor, I will do something significant about both of those things. My time on council as an elected member is such an honour and I understand that I'm not here to make decisions for you. I'm here to represent what you want and what you need. I haven't just appeared out of nowhere expecting the top job. I guess my 12 years, you could say, I've served my apprenticeship and I have been very happy to do so. I have no hidden agenda, no vested interests. I am only here to serve. Thank you. I'm running for mayor and for Hamilton West. My vision for our city is one that we can be proud of, which looks like us and looks after us, one where we feel safe and celebrated. I'm currently the youngest CEO of an electricity retailer in New Zealand, and I understand the responsibility that comes with providing core services. With the first retailer we built for Well Energy Trust, we reduced the cost of electricity in the Waikato by up to 30% due to automation, and now we're working on taking a second retailer nationwide. With nearly 40% of Hamilton earning $20,000 a year or less, those savings are critical. I work at the cutting edge of technology and automation, and we need more people who truly understand technology making decisions in council. As a board member of GoEco, I also understand the role of governance and the importance of sustainability in, in ensuring we can be efficient, effective, and future focused. I'm a strong believer that we need to have real community consultation so that the impact of council's decisions are fully understood by the people making them. I've been one of the people in our city who struggled 
I've received food parcels from our food banks when I haven't been able to make ends meet. I also have a master's degree, and we also need to be talking to the experts who already live in our city. We need to be working together to make sure our city is connected, thriving for years to come. It's about making sure we're fulfilling our role of making sure that council improves the well-being of everybody in our city. Thank you. Next, it's uh, Lisa Lewis, please. Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Lewis. I'd like to warmly thank you for opening up your church to the public and all candidates. This invitation shows you care. Grace Christian, I attended Pastor Peter and Beth Mortlock's church from Bay's Christian Fellowship, where morals were planted from a young age. What are some good morals that would enrich a strong team of counsel? Always tell the truth, have courage, keep your promises, don't cheat or steal, treat others as you would like to be treated, don't judge, forgiving, take responsibility for your actions, be loyal, be patient, tolerant of differences, have respect for yourself and others, humility, generous, have patience. See, we're in a church, it is only right that I read a verse from God's Bible, the New Century Version. I read from Mark 4, verses 35 to 40. That evening, Jesus said to his followers, let's go across the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him in the boat just as he was. There were also other boats with them. A very strong wind came up on the lake. The waves came over the sides and into the boat so that it was already full of water. Jesus was at the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a cushion, and his followers woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and said to the waves, Quiet and be still. Jesus said to his followers, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Trust and faith go hand in hand. As an example, skydiving with faith that a parachute will work. I want you to vote with faith for selections. This will be a team for the next three years. Each and every one will need to be able to work together as a team. I encourage you to take the opportunity and vote with faith, vote with courage, vote without judgment, vote with forgiveness for someone that will serve you in the same way. Thank you for listening to me as a council and a mere candidate. Next to speak will be Andrew King. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the invitation to be here today. I'm about action and not politics. It's easy to be a mayor and come in and promise you won't have any rates increases. All you do is let the city run down, and that's what I came into. We had found this theatre down. We had water work that needed $11 million spending on it. We had a central city library that needs, needed fixing for it because it's earthquake rated. We had 28,000 pots in our book parts. Um, I'm glad to say one of the hardest things I've done in my life is to sort the finances out and we're now on a, on a strong financial foundation going forward and our rates are still at the lowest third in New Zealand. So we're sitting at 30, 35% quarter rates in New Zealand for residential properties are uh, good order. So um, without a strong financial fa foundation you can't look after your families and you can't look after the people. And that's what we're doing going forward. I'm about growth. We've opened up Peacock up in 30 years of promises. We're now opening open that up with 8,000 houses going in that area. We've got a quarter of a billion dollars from central government and benefits this council has in the last three years, including the train to Auckland that we don't have to pay back. This is the first time this has happened in the history of our city, and that's about relationships directly between the mayor and his team, councillors, and central government. I acknowledge the council that we've had has been largely united, and I've had a team who's voted with me to get through and break some of these things that haven't happened in the past. I'm also about looking after the community and the people. We were the first council to bring in a changing place to uh, toilet for those who are severely disabled. We're fixing the footpaths, we've tripled the budget. We've, we're working on a land trust to bring in, to put people into houses that can't afford to buy their own home, uh, but who are working. We've expanded the free bus, um, we've expanded the free bus program so that people um, we'll, have, we'll be able to use buses, but we've, we've already introduced that to the disabled. We've put the train on to Auckland. I'm fighting to stop more properties coming to our city, and I'm fighting, and I also will not let water meters happen. So, the one thing that I, um, my favourite verse in the Bible is to act justly, love and mercy, and to walk humbly with my God. Thank you. And the last of 
the mayoral candidates, Jack Gill. Jack Gill, and I'm standing for mayor and also Hamilton East City Council for a healthier, happier, happening Hamilton. Now, the weird looking hairdress symbolises an all inclusive uh, community, the broom. I'm calling for a clean sweep of the council, removing the old boys network. The rod laser light and entertainment or enlightenment with the servant leadership and a golden trumpet which symbolises jubilee spirit level depicting freedom, justice and equality, democracy, transparency, accountability and integrity. Stop council playing off one against the other. Stop executive back cat salaries and preferred contract doors. Stop elitists cramping on the poor. Justice equality evermore. Stop the higher rates of spending and debt. Stop the high development costs for homes. Stop high rentals and profiteering. Wealth distribution sharing. Boarding houses upskilling everyone. Responsible <laughs> citizens having fun. Now I'm a pastor councillor, community worker. I work with families for justice and also I run the New Zealand Suicide Prevention Trust. I am a father, mother of the city, ambassador of light, peace, love and understanding. I'll be a chief executive officer, administrator, commander, navigator, a good listener with communication skills. As your mayor, I will provide new leadership, new vision, new direction. I am an anti-corruption officer and bring a clean sweep to the council. Democracy, transparency and accountability and integrity. I will expose the CEO half a million dollar ripoff and also ownership of 20 homes for some people here. As part of the Jubilee Covenant Prayer Partners, we will pray for liberty for the downtrodden and oppressed. We will pray for debt cancellation and community restoration, global economic restructuring, creating equal societies. The Jubilee Call is a call to the promotion of human rights and protection of the environment. Jack Gillen for Hamilton City Mayor. Jack Gillen for Hamilton City Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the mayoral candidates. Just a reminder that James Casson, Lisa Lewis and Jack Gillen are also standing for the East Ward. Now the second draw for this afternoon. Tim, Tim Young. Tim will be seated at, uh, at the end of the table there and using a microphone that was provided. Are you coming? Okay. Thanks, Tim. Hi, I'm Tim Young, and I was born and bred in Hamilton. I have a Master of Science degree in Psychology and a postgrad certificate in Educational Psychology. I started my own business, learned how to program video games from YouTube tutorials, and then I developed an educational video game that is now achieving sales in schools. With 24% of Hamilton's population having a disability and an increasing aging population, we need to improve accessibility to open up the community, economy and job market to, all, um, to everyone to reach our potential as a city. We should also improve accessibility to capitalise on the growing age tourism market. I have a clear vision to reduce congestion, improve accessibility, reduce transport costs, and carbon emissions by embracing technology. I think we need someone who has their finger on the pulse of advances in technology and science, and who knows what questions to ask scientists and council staff to inform debate. <coughs> With my unique life experience, I can provide that. Thank you very much. Go on. Maxine Van Oosten to come and speak with us. Nama Hinui Kiakoto Kato, Koa Maxine Van Oosten Fresh ideas and a wise head. I think you deserve better value for money from council, and that's what I offer. I'll vote against any pay increase for our CEO's $440,000 salary and instead would like to see those on the lowest of wages pay the living wage. Affordable yeah, yeah. housing, better transport solutions that reduce carbon emissions, booming businesses offering great jobs. That's my vision for Hamilton. 
We need to change the makeup of our council so that it better reflects the diversity in our city. Let's start with more women representatives. I value your vote. Thank you. Go on, yeah. I'm Peter Humphreys. Um, I grew up uh, with a social worker in my life as a state ward in Wales. I married a social worker 38 years ago. 15 years ago I became a social worker. So social workers run through my veins. It's about social justice for me and it's about time we had somebody on council that had an understanding of social issues. Um, we have business people, we have accountants, and we have um, journalists on the council, but it's, um, what's name? it's people that um, have an understanding of, of the cold face work that goes on here in Hamilton with the social issues. I've run the night shots for 11 years as a member of a team. I was in, um, in the New Zealand Fire Service for seven years as a member of a team. I'd like to be a member of the team on council so um, we can bring some social work into council. And my missus just said as I was going out the door, don't forget our marriage, I was 38 years as a team, and I said, yes, boss. <laughs> uh, next, we invite Anna Smart to speak. Uh, hello, my name is Anna Smart, I'm standing for the East Ward. I'm standing for a balanced approach to our city as we grow. Financial responsibility, not just spending, um, not just spending less, but actually spending what we are spending in the right places. And for being the best city in New Zealand to raise a family, that's from our babies, right through to our grandchildren, encouraging our youth. Uh, I see that being done through um, preserving our quality of life, our rivers, our parks, our green spaces and the things that make Hamilton so special and such a wonderful place to call home, to promote the city as a family friendly city and to promote it as an economically attractive, for biz uh, attractive option for business and also to engage our community and I think that's been lost, I'd really like to see a lot of that, engaging the community through regular consultation, through bringing back the expert panels and through even just the quarterly newspaper that comes in the uh, letterbox. My promise is to put people first, to always listen and to, attack, uh, and to act with integrity in the process. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone and thank you for coming out and spending some of your Sunday afternoon with us and taking such an interest in our local politics. So my name's Margaret Forster and I am standing on the East Board. I just want to tell you a little bit about my history. I have been on council before from 2010 to 2016 and had great success leading the Hamilton Gardens development, uh, the bike plan and the destination playground plan. I've had a professional career of service. I was trained as a teacher. I've policed here in Hamilton. I've been a professional netball coach as well as a volunteer coach. Uh, so you know, I understand the team thing as well. I just want to say, uh, share with you my vision for the city, and that is for Hamilton to be the most family-friendly city in New Zealand for all stages of life. I have three main priority uh, policies. Firstly, it's around reforestation. So I think we plant lots of trees, not just for today, but for tomorrow as well. And we know what how good trees are for our environment. Secondly, I'm about affordability, and I'll just tell you a little story. I went into council the other week and bumped into uh, uh, an older woman called Bev. She was there to get a rates rebate. So I just sat down and asked her, how easy or hard is it to get a rebate? She said, well, actually, it's, it's quite good once you get into the system, but I want a fixed income, and I can't keep affording the rates. So I'm here to, to bat for fixed income earners. Your rates are going to go up by 40% in nine years, and I know your income will not. So I'm here to support you and make sure we make the great, best decisions and get things right. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Krishna Reddy. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou katoa. One thing we have in common. We all love Hamilton. That's why we are here. But our paths are different. My name is Krishna Reddy. I'm a doctor in financial management. I joined 
I put my hand up to become a counselor because the financial affairs of the city council is not that good. The rates are increasing from 9.7% this financial year and forecast to go up to 3.8%. We, I belong to the T, Hamilton Residents and Ratepayers Association. We are integrated team. We have skills. We have diversity. We have knowledge. We have age experience and all this and we can make this difference we want a positive change in hamilton and make rate make increase so, so affordable that we can love to live as we are here loving hamilton thank you very much for your time next ask kish nike road to speak Hello, good afternoon. I'm Kesh Naidu Road. So help me to help you, Hamilton. Do you care about the future of our city? Three things I want to see happen. Number one, careful spending. So responsible decisions that bring value to you. Our rates need to be proportioned to the benefits we receive. Two, to improve our communities to bridge the gap of engagement and to care for our people. Three, sustain our environment. So to find and promote ways to reduce our carbon footprint to give our children a fighting chance. I am a pharmacist, I'm a mom, and I co-own and manage two successful pharmacy businesses. And uh, my business mind, combined with my roots in the community, places me in the optimal position to represent you and shape our city's growth. So please trust me with your vote and help me to help you, Hamilton. Thank you. Next to speak will be Gary Mellis. Thank you very much, and thank you for organising today's event. Um, it's pretty special. Uh, look, today you're going to um, hear that we just have to keep increasing rates in order to maintain our assets, our buildings, our properties, etc. And of course we have to do that with these essential services, but there are millions and millions of dollars of ratepayers' money not being spent on essential services, rather it's being spent on low quality services and activities that are a million miles away from delivering good value. Let me explain. This year's 3.8% rate increase equates to about $6.8 million. Eliminating some of these low benefit to cost programs will save the ratepayers about $3.8 million. So I'll give you some examples. If we eliminate the, two, eliminate the two hours free parking in the CBD, it would save rate payers a million dollars a year. Close down the eyesight would save another eight hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, the clo uh, stop the uh, distributions um, giveaway on CBD development save a million dollars now. Now I'll have to stop there because I've only got sixty seconds. But over those sixty seconds, I've saved rate payers three point eight million dollars. So that works out about sixty four million dollars a second. So you don't want me to stop. And the next speaker will be Rob Pascoe. Uh, thanks for coming along this afternoon. I'm Rob Pascoe, and I'm seeking to be re-elected to the West Ward. To, sorry, to the East Ward. <laughs> born, born and schooled in Hamilton. I returned back to Hamilton immediately after completing an accounting degree at Auckland University. I've been a chartered accountant working in the CBD since 1974. I bring my business and finance experience and background to the council table. This year council's capital spending is budgeted at $288 million, most of which will be funded through borrowing. City debt will be more than double in the next four years to around $750 million. More than ever, councillors need oversight to ensure that the spending is timely to city growth, it funds what residents want, and is economical. This requires councillors to ask the right and sometimes tough questions and making sure answers are clear and understood. Rest assured, if elected, I will be at the forefront in seeking those right decisions and great outcomes for city residents. Thank you. Ryan Hamilton will speak next. Kia ora, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Check out my Facebook page, Hamilton for Hamilton. You'll see the last three years of my journey. I can't do it justice today. Mark Twain said, what is a cynic? Knows the cost of everything but the value of nothing. And whilst I am a business owner and appreciate financial investment and cost, 
We've got other things as a community that we hold value to as well, so it's not just all black and white dollars. What you're not hearing in this council campaign is something called special purpose vehicles. Central government is exploring ways and means to finance new growth where the balance and the debt does not sit on council's books. They're doing an example in Auckland, and I'm pushing hard along with other, some of other elected members and staff to get this example, or staff have done in Hamilton, like they're doing in Auckland, where we can have $100 million worth of investment in new growth sales, and it doesn't affect ratepayers because it, it targets the end user, the people living in the house, and won't be on rates. These are the type of innovative, out-of-the-box solutions we need to look for because our DCs and rates funding mechanism isn't going to take us to where we need to go. Thank you. Meliane Burgess to speak. Kia ora koutou, tāla kalava. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Meliane Burgess. I'm an accountant, a businesswoman with strong governance and community experience. I stand for fair and balanced City Council decisions, and I strongly believe that Hamilton City Council should represent the, diverse, the diversity of the people and the cultures that do live and work in Hamilton. I want Hamilton to continue to be affordable, family-friendly and safe. Therefore, leads to my key priorities which are prudent financial management and accountability to the ratepayers, support in the development and maintenance of community spaces, support in the development of key infrastructure that makes community life a better place for all, and initiatives that makes our city safe. I promise you that I will listen to you. I will work hard to deliver what is required for the benefit of our residents. <laughs> I know that with my background and experience, I will contribute immensely into the um, into making our city a better place for all. I'm sorry that Val just puts in here. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Hello. Um, I have always tried my very best to make Hamilton better over the last 30 years. You know I stand for connected uh, cycleways, they're great for our health, for our environment, for our economy, uh, and for our safety. I have always believed in building up in the centre rather than sprawling out. Uh, for playgrounds and walking distance between uh, or from every Hamilton home, community gardens, <coughs> and a safer, smarter, and easier Hamilton. But can I deliver those things? I can. Why? Because I get on with folk. I get on with people. You get more with uh, more bees with honey than a stick. I can disagree without being disagreeable. You need councillors who will work with their colleagues, with people they don't necessarily like or get along with for a better outcome for Hamilton. I do that. Are they strong enough to listen to their older colleagues and challenge them respectfully? I am. Are they graceful enough to own it when they make mistakes? and to learn from them so they don't make them again. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Are they honest enough to ask questions when they don't understand? I am. This is how I've managed to help change the Thomas Road intersection with the help of my colleagues. This is how I've managed to get our separated cycle lanes in the ground with the help of my colleagues. This is how I've managed to lead the rubbish collection with the help of my colleagues. I can't do it I, 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 by myself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Speaker, Tony Dixon. Good afternoon. I'm Tony Dixon and I'm standing because I've lost confidence in our council. They have committed to projects without true costing. They've increased rates and then pushed their favourite projects spending your money. They have not listened to you. If you wish to vote for them again, then you do so knowing you will endorse their decisions and give them carte blanche to, to continue to do so. I'm part of a team, Team Integrity, formed by the Hamilton Ratepayers Association and made up of committed people with a variety of skills and dedicated to ensure transparency, no deals behind closed doors, accountability, clear costing of every activity, democracy, following the wishes of the people and integrity, action consistent with our values. If you believe in these principles, then join us in making Hamilton a better place to be. Vote for team integrity and we'll take back control. Thank you. Finally, Andrew Bitter. Along with Tony and Krishna, I am part of team integrity too. 
Today, I want to talk about the world's most powerful drug, opium. Not the stuff made from poppies, but three letters, O-P-M. It stands for other people's money. Politicians are addicted to it because it makes decisions easy. The new event centre or the V8s, why not both? That's the magic of opium. It is all a fantasy. There is no such thing as opium. It is your money. We need to rehab our council. We need to take opium off the table. We need to fix rate rises at CPI inflation. We don't need to elect people for easy decisions. We need to elect people for hard decisions. Team integrity is built around the skills to do the hard work. We need your vote. Thank you. I would like to know one significant thing from the last year or two that you would do differently to create trust. And I'm asking specifically Angela, but I would like to hear that as well from one other. One other. Paula. Thank you. Paula, come up to me. We do need this term to create trust. So I've been incredibly transparent this term, uh, sometimes to the detriment of my relationship with my colleagues. Um, I'm not sure that I would do that any differently, though, because you deserve transparency. So I would possibly fight a little bit harder uh, in the chamber to try and stop the rates increase, I guess. I'm, I've done as much as I can this term to try and build trust, given that I was put into the opposition. It's pretty tough. <laughs> Thank you. That, the answer to that question is simple for me. I would improve community engagement and public participation across the board of the council. Because in my opinion, it has not been done well enough. And I'd be looking to processes similar to the one we used in the Rotatuna Village Hub, where the community took hold of that and drove that and told us what they wanted. I would look at beyond online submission forms and five minute public forums in which sometimes the public get treated with disrespect. Jim, I'll invite you to ask the second question. They speak for themselves. Native trees are solid growing, they actually take a longer time to absorb more carbon. So, as I said, it doesn't matter whether you think it's a fraud or a fake, planting heaps of trees is a fantastic idea. Cherry blossoms, fruit trees in our parks and open spaces and playgrounds and lots of players. Like I said, I'm a pharmacist. I study science, I go by evidence and facts, and, um, and I truly believe that we can be doing more. Um, you know, New Zealand is not as large as some of the other countries out there who make a larger impact, but we can all do our bit, and, um, and I'm all for um, you know, doing the best for our children. I have a four-year-old. I don't want him to be having this conversation when he's my age. Climate change is on us. Whether you believe it's man-made or whether you believe it's uh, cyclic or a combination of both, things are changing. But our council did not declare a climate emergency. We're one of the only major cities in New Zealand that didn't declare a climate emergency. And we voted that down uh, about a month ago. An emergency is when a roof's fallen. An emergency is when the house is on fire. Ooh. Ooh. I was provided with a written question before the afternoon started, which flows on from that. So Gary, James and Ryan, you've been asked to answer. What does the City Council need to do about the climate change emergency? Um, I think this is possibly one of the biggest frauds committed on humanity. Oh, come on. Um, <laughs> the, ever since man has got off his, stopped dragging his knuckles around the world, um, there have been people in a cloak on top of a mountain with a sign saying the end is nigh. 
It has never happened. You've got absurdity in the states where senators are saying in 10, in 10 to 12 years the, the earth will be uninhabitable. To this is absolute rubbish. We had the tragedy the other day of having a whole lot of school kids, smart, smart school kids came and presented to council about us asking us to do a climate um, emergency. These kids were in tears. They were genuinely concerned that they would not uh, be able to have children. These, I don't understand why kids are self-harming. It is just an absolute Oh, get off. <laughs> okay, thank you for the question. Look, um, climate change is happening, yeah. and I said that uh, at, the, at the, uh, the council meeting. Whether it is cyclic or whatever else, it has been happening since the day of the dinosaur right up to now. But, you know, with the city council, um, we planted 38,000 trees last year. We've got all sorts of alternative forms of transport going. We're, we're making the, the buses uh, free for certain people that um, uh, Mayor King brought in. You know, it's um, every other city in New Zealand that has claimed or have, has chimed in with an accident emergency have done nothing. And that's including Dunedin. Dunedin, Auckland and other councils, when they have declared an emergency, they haven't done as much as what Hamilton are doing at this very stage. Thank you. Uh, I take a pretty pragmatic approach to this. Council's actually d developed a pretty robust um, climate change process and they're actually un that's underway at the moment and it's actually pretty good. Uh, but we're also a little bit dependent on what central government does around that because <coughs> council's saying, well, if central government's declaring all these things and, and demanding these things, then they need to help us finance them as well because otherwise, again, the burden falls back with you. So I think we have to be pragmatic and I think we're on that path. <laughs> Um, climate change is something that is happening whether we like it or not, unfortunately. We know specifically from scientific modelling that specifically the way that climate change is going to affect Hamilton is there is going to be increased flooding and there's going to be increased temperature rises. And the flooding itself is concerning because it is flash flooding over single hour periods. When you look at uh, Lake Domain, which is near where I used to live, it floods with only a little bit of rain. We already know that our infrastructure is not good enough. And we can act now to make it better because you also need to think about all of the money that you have paid in rates over the past 10, 20, 30, however long. If we don't look after our infrastructure because we know climate change is coming, we are letting you down. And that, that investment that you have put in our infrastructure to get it to this point, we are letting you down. Uh, this is a commercial. Your voting papers should re reach you, New Zealand Post allowing, between the 20th and the 25th of September. Voting closes at noon on the 12th of October. Beside somebody, you had a question, please. Hi, um, this is a question just solely for Matt Bunting. This is for Matt Bunting. Now that you're on council and a councillor, for three years or so. Are you still picking on those poor old wardens? Yes. Sorry, yes, um, the question, um, am I right, was now that I've been on council for three years, am I still picking on parking wardens? Right, I'm going to give you the background if you'll, if you'll indulge me. Um, many years ago when I was on the radio, I got very annoyed that I seemed to be getting picked on by a certain parking warden. Oh, right. And so I took it upon myself to hang the car from a crane above the parking spot <laughs> so that um, I wasn't technically on the spot. Ironically, that's what got me involved in politics. Thank you. That, we, uh, when was that? Where? Where? That was uh, outside BP for the Aura, if I remember rightly, and you were on the parking squad, if I remember rightly. <laughs> And you were lovely about it too, thank you. Um, ironically, that's what got me into politics, and I found myself just in the last year working with our parking wardens, training them up with their communication skills because they have got an awful job. They have got an awful job. Nobody likes what they have to do. So I, I will carry on working with those people if you let me, and uh, I think our parking wardens are absolutely fantastic people. <laughs> longer than he was mentioned. <laughs> Back on this side, someone else who has a question ready to ask? Okay, so what's what's special about living in Hamilton? To me, what's special is the fact it seems to have more green space and the gullies than any other city in New Zealand. That's two sentences, your question please. Okay, my question is, 
Can the city council please treat all this green space as infrastructure and make sure that it's properly maintained? Too many dead trees, too no, many wounded trees. That's your question. Who do you wish to answer it, please? Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, could um, Tim Young answer it, please? And, um, sorry, was it, yeah, and Andrew, um, Bella, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we need to obviously at this one in the Gully Restoration Program, uh, we can plant lots of uh, plants along the riverbanks to help uh, filtrate the toxins into the river, and um, we can uh, serotoxin has a great idea of uh, grain gardens to help filtrate things on the burns as well. Um, food forests, we can uh, use the yeah use the burns and. and more productive ways and uh, yeah, find lots of trees, but I don't know what else. <laughs> Thank you. Can the city council look after our gullies and trees? Yes. <laughs> That's a very good model for the next written question I've received and the, the, uh, all of the mayoral candidates are asked to answer it in one word, please. So we'll start over here on my right and move through the, the mayoral candidates. Would you consider changing the Hamilton rating system back to land-based rather than capital-based rating? One word each. Yes. One word, one No. More info? Uh, what was that? Right? More info. I spread it. I managed to smash it in one word. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes or no. Two words. Keep going. Yes or no. Or yes no. well, whatever. One word. No. <laughs> no. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Back on this side, any other questions that have been prepared now? In the middle, any other questions? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll be your part. You'll be next. Yeah. All right, you'll be next. <coughs> it wouldn't be a meet the candidate event without candidates trying to take uh, claim for various issues of things that they've done while they're on council. My question specifically is about cycling infrastructure, east street infrastructure, alternative <coughs> There are two candidates who claim to have made significant gains in this area. Uh, what have you actually done on your time in council? This question is for Margaret Forsyth and Mark Bunting. Thank you. Thank you. Back in 2013-2016, uh, in that second term I was on, I led a bike plan working group. So I learned a process by my council. You um, ask what's needed, then you listen, then you get together a group of enthusiastic stakeholders, and you devise a plan, then you test the plan, and then you deliver. So that's what we did. I led a working group that actually started the bike plan that the current council is still using. It's a 30-year visionary bike plan. We took international models from Copenhagen, from... Um, Amsterdam and looked at what's a city going to need, what's going to look like potentially in 30 years and I'm pleased to say it's a great start but there's more to be done. We still need to connect our cycleways and we still need to have some protected on-road cycleways as well. Safety for the thing. Thank you, um, and I pay tribute to that council for that, that great work. Uh, Margaret's right, there are some brilliant cycleways but they don't connect to each other. And the issue is, people want to ride safely. We've discovered, uh, I did a, a trip to Christchurch, and they've done some magnificent work down there. They've worked out that 80% of people want to cycle, but they are too concerned or too afraid to cycle. So you will have seen the Claudins Bridge, the work that's going on there. That is just a very small part of this connectivity project that we're working. We've managed to get the first ever separated cycle lane in there. Now, cycle lanes are nothing to be afraid of. We should take them off the roads that everyone else wants to drive on. It's quite simple. Cycle lanes, the ones that benefit the most are the motorists, and I want to revise that cycle plan and build some more flippant cycleways. Thank you. My, my question is in six words and it's addressed to Angela, Andrew, and Andrew. Dundee Deals, Dundee's Regional Theatre. Please explain. 
Dietary deals, done deals, regional theatre. The topic of the question is the regional theatre. And dodgy deals. Don't all rush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100% clear on the question, but the question I do can answer is the theatre. Uh, yes, I support the theatre. I think it's important for a city of our size to have a regional theatre uh, of a very high calibre. And I think it's also really, really important for our young people to be able to see the performing arts as a future career. So yes, I support it. Um, the word dodgy means corrupt. This council is not corrupt. So I don't accept That's that. That's what Angela said, and you haven't disclaimed it. Pardon? I do not accept the word dodgy being used with this council. This council That's is not, not corrupt. That's the first thing I want to make very clear. The second thing is, is that we need to either spend $20 million fixing up the founders, which is an old theatre, or we could build a brand new theatre with $25 million worth of ratepayer money. We chose to build a brand new theatre with $25,000 of ratepayer money. The rest of the money has come from the philanthropic community. So we're getting a $75,000 theatre for $25,000 of ratepayer money, which we had to spend $20,000 fixing up the old theatre anyway. We weren't consulted. My name is Maxine Van Oosten and I promote council uh, accountability for spending. And that's why I referred the murky deals that were done on uh, the property purchases on Victoria Street uh, this time last year to the Auditor General and then to the Serious Broad Office because I believe that they were done behind closed doors Definitely. and there are questions to be answered around yes. it. And uh, that's what I believe uh, needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine. Uh, the Hamilton Residents Ratepayers Association has been asking a whole bunch of official information act questions about these, uh, and we haven't been getting proper answers. I want to have a really close look at these things. Thank you for your question. Thank you. There's a number of things rolled into that. What I want to make quite clear is that the deal on the purchase of the land in the central business district I voted against. I wouldn't have uh, approved that deal because of the way it was hurried through and the way that it was overpriced. Sorry, I understand what you were talking about. Look, dodgy deals are anything that I disagree with that. We are the ratepayers, no, I don't mean like that. We're the ratepayers <laughs> paying. The, the transparency around the purchase, for this right, transparency around the purchase of the Victoria Street buildings was dodgy. Announcing at five to ten to midnight a twelve percent rates increase on your council is dodgy. Yeah. Having a nine point seven percent rates increase this year with a six and a half million dollar cash surplus is dodgy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Got your yes. Yes. Very good. decided that I will allow Andrew to uh, make one more statement, then the topic can be pursued over a cup of tea later on. <laughs> Firstly, once again, I want to make it really clear, the word dodgy means corrupt. This council is not corrupt. The Auditor General did look into those deals and cleared it, and the Serious Fraud Office said that they didn't want to pick this up. There was nothing to answer. So this is politicking at its dirtiest. Well, can we see this that council really is not dodgy, and if anybody this feels it's dodgy, lay a complaint through the proper processes, no, just which has already been done and nothing came of it. Devious. But it's a very, very serious allegation. But that goes right from the chief executive right down to the people who work in the council at the bottom end and all the councillors who've been involved in the last three years. So I do not accept that this council in any shape or form is dodgy. Yes. Yes. Yes.
atheist. More questions, please. Thank you. I'd like to ask, can council do more to encourage high-rise development and stop this ever-expansion of the city out of the some of our best soils in New Zealand? I think that is the way forward now with the growth of Hamilton. We've got to look at building up rather than building out. Um, council lately have put out a um, article on um, increasing the heights of the building now. Um, so that's probably still in discussion. And that's the way forward for for a city our growth is if you look at it now as well, a lot of the buildings are building upwards and with um, council and discussion of changing that limit of heights to further up will make that allowance to build more of our um, houses upwards rather than um, out towards to continue to um, remain those green spaces and those um, areas intact. Thank you, and that's a really good question. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, the the common knowledge is that you can there's some ability to uh, use existing infrastructure. Um, you know, if you've got uh, already got some built uh, properties and you've got roads there, you've got sewerage pipes coming in, water pipes coming in, uh, then you can develop for free, kind of. But there are some issues now that we have been doing that for quite some time. We have been developing at about 50% infill, 50% greenfields. We are still developing at 50% infill, uh, uh, infill, which is great. However, there will come a time when that free infrastructure is full, just like, um, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, we've asked the staff to get back to us on that. I don't think we've had a response. But, um, yeah, so your issue's your, your correct, Gary. <laughs> Maxine raised the word that I would like a definition of, because that to me is one of the important things that council to be clear about what is said, so it's clear to those who hear. For what income do you mean affordable housing? Mm. So, Gorham, you want Maxine and anyone else? Anyone else. Maxine, Paul has said you'd like to say something, and Ryan said you'd like to say something. So, affordable uh, housing, I believe, is a, a all sorts of models. It's uh, smaller housing, uh, higher density housing, different kinds of housing to suit all kinds of Hamiltonians. Uh, we have our disability sector, our um, ageing population, our young families, our workers who all need to be able to rely on a house and uh, a community in order to be able to enjoy the best Hamilton lifestyles. And uh, that's what I promote. I promote a variety of different housing and encourage our uh, city and our developers to be able to zone and, uh, and support that. Kia ora. I was going to ask this to put passion to Anna because I know that she has a particular interest. In Um, yeah, I'm really passionate about housing. I'm a real estate agent in and out of people's houses and know what it takes to grow communities. And I think in terms of affordable housing, yes, you've got income. So, I mean, I suppose it's the size of your mortgage, it's your outgoings, it's your incomings. That's a really hard question to answer. I don't think it's $650,000. Um, and I don't think we're going to get affordable housing either in the new likes of Peacocks, which I think perhaps it's been touted a little bit that you might, with the development contribution land cost bill cost, that's just not actually a viable option. So I'd like to see uh, apartments that Infill actually provides affordable and actually quite a cool way of living, plus um, just a variety of options and the ability to perhaps look at using our neighbours differently and making sure that we are building um, communities with good facilities. Uh, thank you. It's, it's quite a dubious question because if there's 100 people in this room, we'd all come up with 100 different definitions of what is affordable. But I think the key is releasing and opening up the volume of housing and land. If we've got more volume, it does take the pressure off the market and, and enable people at the bottom to find their way up. This council uh, recently in, uh, initiated 
the community lands trust, which means people can get into property without the purchase of land, they'll pay a peppercorn rental because most of the cost of housing is, is the land. You can't get much under four hundred thousand dollars in rota rota turner. But if you take the land away, then you get uh, one to two bedroom apartments. You make it very affordable for a, a far greater majority of people. Oh, I'll be like 20 seconds. <laughs> the last one was 50. I'll be 20 seconds. <laughs> the uh, av um, median household income in this city is $57,000, and the median or average house price is currently around $580,000. There is no such thing anymore as affordable housing, there just isn't. Yeah. I'd just like to uh, have a show of hands from the candidates. Um, you've all read this? Yes. No? You find it helpful? Yes. I think there are serious omissions. And it's not written by any of the, the councillors, written by the CEO. And one of them is that where it comes to celebrate Hamilton on pages five and six, there's absolutely no reference to the fact that you, this Hamilton was the first and at one stage the only age-friendly city as uh, status awarded by the World Health Organization. And so my question uh, is, and the people I'd particularly like to hear from would be Margaret, uh, Peter and Tim, um, what thought have you given to celebrating the age-friendly status that Hamilton has and council support for the age-friendly Hamilton plan? Thank you. The first thing I do would be to bring back the uh, Aged Persons Advisory Board. I think that's a really good interface for uh, council and our uh, older population so that we really get to the heartbeat of what the uh, needs and, and desires for our ageing population are. I mean, my parents are in their 80s, so I totally understand the needs and challenges of an older population. Uh, they're on fixed income, so as I said, fixed income and uh, the rates increases are really... They stir me something terrible. I get really, um, I really want to go in bed. It's, uh, it's just not affordable. I know their income, and I know many of your income will not go up by 40% over the next nine years, and your rates are going to go up that, 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 uh, to that rate. I do not want to hear of people having to sell their vehicles so that they can pay their rates. I do not want to hear about other people having to shift out of their homes and move in with their children. And I do not want to hear about people having to downsize so that they can pay their rates. Um, so I agree that we should be uh, reinstating the advisory panels uh, for aged people. We need to hear from them to you know their specific concerns. I know a lot about accessibility, which uh, um, affects aged people as well as young families and people with temporary disabilities. Um, so I think if we can improve accessibility, have more footpaths, uh, more inclusive public transport, which um, disabled and elderly people have been subsidising for years by paying rates and taxes for their development without access to their use. Um, so yes, I think if we need to be including all the everyone in our society to make use of our potential. Bravo. A few years ago, we sold off the pensioners' housing, which would have helped some of our elderly now. We, um, and that was, sale went through, and um, there was 19.3 million that came back in March this year. That just went into the pool. It didn't go to any more social housing. Yes, we do have a land trust project that's in hand, but that's going to take ages, and that's not going to affect our elderly. We should have kept the pensioners' housing. Those were set up in the 60s by the ratepayers for to look after our elderly, and we should have been looking after them now. And that money has just gone into the pool. So I'm actually really disappointed that we didn't do that. So if I was on council, I would be a voice for coming back, getting back into social housing, especially around our elderly. Thank you. Hello, question for Paula um, Louise and Angela. I understand the need for affordable housing, but how do you um, count for affordable housing um, um, in relation to low-cost building, cheap buildings, 
cheap apartments being put up was seemingly um, appealing to me without due consideration to rubbish, parking, um, environmental, local environmental issues, um, the pulling down of old, older houses that um, have lasted 40, 50, 60 years to houses that are now being taken down during a couple of decades old. So affordable versus cheap and nasty, which is bringing down the value of the city. Thank you. You're not a candidate, so that'll do. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with you that not uh, affordable doesn't necessarily equate with good quality and good urban design is the key. I think Anna started to touch on that before. We've got to design communities in a smart way where small spaces function well together. And there are some examples of that. Wellington has uh, got on the front foot of this and created some really nice socially cohesive small footprint uh, villages at a low cost, and that's where we've got to go. So I did support the um, Community Lands Trust move. I wouldn't have supported building with pension houses, but I supported the two billion. It's not enough, because as Ryan says, 400,000 per section, right? So that doesn't go very far. Thank you. Thank you. Your question is, if I'm elected mayor, what am I going to do about high-density housing, quality high-density housing? That's the question. Um, I'm going to, get, I'm tired actually of talking about affordable housing. I'm going to do something about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring together a mayoral symposium to stop talking about it and start doing something about it. Because I've noticed what happens in terms of low-quality, high-density housing is council has a rule book Gary loves the district plan. We have a rule book. Uh, you put that out, it has unintended consequences that occur because developers respond to the rule book. The person that's missing is the person that's going to buy the housing. So as that symposium, with that symposium, I am going to start at the coalface. I'm actually going to ask the residents and and people, it's really hard to answer that these years. I'm going to ask you what you want first. Yeah, so I've moved eight times in the eight years that I've lived in Hamilton. I have lived in terrible high density where you couldn't even back your car out of the space. And when we talk about high density, it has to be good high density. If you build houses out in the middle of nowhere with no services attached to them, nobody's going to want to live in them. So we also have to think about our infrastructure around them. So that's our public transport, our cycleways, our businesses. Um, and we need to consider the livability of houses. And so I've lived in rentals up until literally about three days ago. And it is so critical that we get those houses right. I would just like to ask um, Mr. King, what plans does the city have the beautiful site when the Founders Theatre comes down? Uh, it's a perfect site. Yeah, in my opinion. What plans does the city have to put in that space? <laughs> so we don't know for sure what's going to happen with that space. We don't know for sure what's going to happen with that building. We're not making decisions on what we do, and it'll be a decision of the new council until the last fifteen million dollars from the from central government um, comes in for the theatre, which is supposed to be being announced in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be a decision for the new council of whether it stays as a town hall or whether it just, just what happens. So there's no decision that we made at this stage. That's why it's still there. We haven't demolished it yet. Yes, Margaret. I have a vision for that space to be a beautiful passive park. So while we are building up and uh, there are more residential and apartment opportunities in town, I think having a space like that where we plant, and I'm really keen on this tree planting thing, but we could plant thousands of cherry blossoms. I know there's a, a cherry blossom festival that's coming up now, it's that time of year, 
Now that's an international, potentially an international tourism opportunity for us. We leverage off the back of the Martini Cherry Blossom Festival. We have these amazing cherry blossoms growing in the city. It becomes a beautiful space for contemplation, for reflection, to meet, to socialise, and just get in touch with nature. Thank you. Just a comment to Margaret um, and to other councillors who plant trees and then they have to be dug up because our paths go up and down. So could you rem uh, remember about that? But my question is about rates. Um, I'm going to ask, I want to ask Mark, um, James and Gary and Peter um, what they're going to do to keep rates down, especially for superannuants, I've had lots of people talk to me about this. It's quite simple, we have to go to a back to basics policy and stop the frivolous spending we've been doing. And we just can't keep doing that. And uh, if we're going to keep rates down, we have to go back to basics. We can't have um, a build it and they will come attitude in Hamilton. We're not that big. We have to go back to doing what we should be doing and doing it well. And by doing that, without further spending, we should be able to keep the rates down. Kia ora. Uh, the rates have gone up for the last uh, seven, eight years. Um, they went up 9.8, 9.7 last year. The years before, 3.8 and 3.9. This year has gone 3.8. We've had business people that have done really well in business that have been in council. They haven't been able to keep it down. So I expect rates to come to new life that it's not going to go down. The, um, the city is growing. We have a busload of people moving into the city every week. So the infrastructure is getting larger and we need more um, infrastructure in place. So I can't see the rates actually coming down. Um, so that's my answer. Thank you. It's a very uh, tough question, and it's a question that's always on our minds. Um, you're going to end up with a lot of answers on, we will keep them down, we'll keep them down. Unfortunately, we're up against a giant force that is a very large bureaucracy that has a million reasons that we should spend more, so we need to think a lot harder. The danger you're going to have is if you focus just on keeping rates down, you're going to end up with what we walked into, and that was a pool that needed... 10 to 14 million dollars spent on it, a theatre that was falling down, a library that's uh, falling over, and as Mary Andrew said, thousands and thousands of footpaths. So it's always going to be a balance. I think where we can make the difference is by putting the screws on the, uh, the chief executive and getting them to do things just smart. Thank you. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I should have kept going because I was saving you 64 million, 64 thousand dollars a second. <laughs> okay. um, so yeah, that's it. I've, I've actually come out and identified some re ways to reduce rates. And they are not stopping um, growth from the city. It's not making the city any unsafer. So there are things you can do. The council has to have the guts to call out some of our spending as being unnecessary or not good value for money. And unfortunately, we're not, we, we haven't had a council that's prepared to do that. So you know, I've, I've, I've identified three um, things in my first speech. There's a whole list of them, you know. I could give, I could give you a zero rate to this. Thank you. I'm going to call a, a halt to questions, but before we just wrap up, uh, at the same time as the City Council elections, there are regional council elections. I understand that we may have a couple of candidates here. We do have a couple of candidates here. They're not going to make speeches, but understand that that's another part of our vote. I'll just keep talking so they can't make a speech. And we've just walked down the aisle and we're prepared to get married to the regional council. So we need your vote to do that. So Barry Quayle, standing for regional council. My name is William Durning. I've lived in the city for 22 years. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a business owner, and I would really appreciate your vote for the regional council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.